Welcome everyone. So the Life Engine has gotten a pretty cool update and uh, I've changed a few things. I've built into the organisms a rudimentary way for them to see and a way for them to think. So uh, it ends up having some pretty awesome results and I wanted to show those off. But first I want to just talk a little bit about the color scheme change. Obviously the organisms look a little bit different than they used to in my last video. The main change being that the producer, which used to be white, is now green, which I think looks a little bit more appropriate for a plant. And the food cell is more of this deep blue rather than the green that it was before, which I think looks a little bit better, kind of blends more into the background. I like it more. I basically made the color scheme a little more neon and the colors more complementary towards one another, as well as being more intuitive. So let me know what you think. I might add the ability to revert back to the original color scheme, but we'll see. And the rest of the cells are more or less the same color as they were before. The orange cell is still a mouth, the light blue is a mover, the red is a killer, and purple, which I didn't get a chance to talk about last time, is armor. Which isn't a new cell, it just allows you to defend yourself against killers. And you'll notice the new cell, which is this kind of grayish purple, is an eye cell. It allows organisms to perceive their environments. So you can see that they've actually started to evolve here and the eye cell is the one with a slit down the middle. So the slit denotes which direction the eye is facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the environment and just kinda show how the eye works in a simple system. Alright, so here is the eye. The eye cell looks a certain number of cells down the direction that the eye is actually facing, and depending on what type of cell it observes first, it will change its behavior. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this producer here and drop a whole bunch of these uh, movers into the world and surround them with food, because food is one of the things that they will move towards. And if you look in the organism details panel at the brain section, you can see what types of cells the organism will move towards and move away from. And these values can also mutate and evolve over time. So as you can see, the organisms are following the food as it's dropped. And it's clear that the eyes are giving them a slight edge in finding food and moving towards it. So this is clearly a very simplistic form of intelligence, basically move towards certain types of cells, move away from other types of cells. There's no neural network in there that would be computationally inefficient. Also, neural networks tend to be very difficult to understand once they start getting very complicated. And uh, I think this simplistic form of intelligence not only allows you to understand thoroughly what's going on, but also allows for some really complex behaviors and relationships to evolve, despite the simplistic rules. The function of the eye cells was inspired very heavily by uh, trilobite eyes, which trilobites are these ancient arthropods that have a very simplistic eye that can see essentially what's directly in front of it and they end up bunching up together to form what is essentially a compound eye. So that's kind of what I wanted to have happen in my simulation. Trilobites emerged during the Cambrian Explosion, which is a period of history in which a whole ton of very complex multicellular organisms suddenly appeared in the fossil record. And there is a theory that at least part of that diversity was due to the evolution of vision and perception and decision making, which is very much parallel to what I have observed in this simulation. There are so many cool things that have evolved since I have added vision that I can't even talk about all of them in a single video. But I sure can try. So let's go ahead and reset the environment and we'll just kind of watch and see what evolves.
Okay, it looks like some complex life has evolved, so let's take a look, let's slow it down a bit and see what has actually evolved. So we have these kind of square organisms with two eyes that looks like they move towards food, producer, and armor. And their brains start out semi-random. They move towards food and away from killers by default. The rest are all randomly chosen. Now let's look at this producer. This producer has an eye, which why would it have an eye if it's a producer? It can't move, it can't change its direction. The answer lies in the predators in the environment. The predators also fear eyes. Why would predators fear eyes? Well, because they don't want to run into each other. They want to run away from other predators. And the producers have taken advantage of this by growing camouflage eyes. Now this is rather like when a butterfly develops a pattern on its wings that looks like the eyes of an owl or of a predatory bird. This is to ward off other predators in the environment that are afraid of eyes because predators have eyes. This is super cool to me. I mean, the coolest thing I have ever seen this simulation do, hands down. Now this is not the best strategy. There are other strategies like growing a red cell or an armor cell that ward off predators but also serve some sort of purpose that make them better strategies. But uh, nonetheless, it is still a useful strategy and you'll see it pop up from time to time. Okay, so we are starting to see some really strong domination by these aggressive predatory movers. They are, uh, by the looks of it, they seem to hunt producers. Uh, they see producer cells, they move towards them. So they become extraordinarily aggressive. And this is causing some really strong selective pressure on the producers. The producers now, I mean, even the slightest advantage in growing a red cell, growing an additional cell, which gives you a little bit extra health, uh, growing a purple cell, growing an eye cell, growing anything that might scare off predators or cause them harm is uh, enormously advantageous. So we'll see what long-term effects this selective pressure has. Okay, so by the looks of it, I think that these producers are actually going to go extinct. So I'm actually going to manufacture an organism here. It's going to be a producer with a whole lot of armor. And this armor will hopefully defend it and allow it to propagate in the environment despite these highly aggressive uh, predators. So yeah, it seems to be growing pretty well. This organism is a pretty good one, especially um, since I've added eyes to the simulation, it's a lot better than it used to be. Uh, I call it a purple flower, because it kind of looks like one. So yeah, it seems to be doing quite well. Just going to turn down the speed a little bit here and uh, let's look at the movers now. The movers have developed two eyes and they are afraid of armor which seems to be pretty disadvantageous when there's a lot of armor in the environment um, especially since it doesn't hurt you and these other old producers seem to be dying out. Whoa look at the size of these guys they're massive. Oh my goodness. They seem to be doing okay, but they probably will be hit by some aggressive predators soon and not do as well as the purple flowers. But we'll see. Yeah, their population has taken a hit now. 
And the purple flowers are moving in. Let's actually look at these uh, movers here. So these movers within the big population of purple flowers, it, they are quite peaceful. Um, they have actually developed in some areas producer cells, which are useless for movers. They can't produce anything when they're moving. Um, but since they are attracted to producer cells, they actually move together which produces a sort of school of fish, sort of swarm intelligence. They follow each other away from danger and towards food. So that's pretty awesome. Although that also is not super stable, since predators can take advantage of it by growing producer cells and luring in these schools of fish. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and not much has changed. I'm sure if I left it running for a long period of time, it would develop something interesting, but I'm just going to stop it here, and if you want to run it, then you totally can. But before I go, I want to show you very quickly how you can disable the eyes to go back to the classic mode that I had in my previous video. You can simply go to Simulation Controls, go to the parameter Look Range, and set that to zero. So eyes will still evolve, but they'll be essentially useless. So there you go. Again, this is free to play, the link is in the description, and uh, I encourage you to mess around with it and find something that I haven't been able to find. Good luck, and thanks for watching.